Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fur and Fam YouTube channel. I'm Carver. Two weeks ago we posted a video with three major mistakes that we see people make all the time when they're doing their van electrical. So today we're going to break down that first electrical mistake and do a real deep dive on it. And the focus of the video is going to be on wire sizing, how to pick the right wire, how you know that the wire can handle the amount of current you want to run through it, and a little bit about running wire through conduit and how that affects what size wire you use as well. So, let's jump right in and get started. Basically, you have two types of wire in a van. One that you use for AC, and then another that you use for DC. Now, you can use the same type of wire for both, so long as that it's rated for both. So when you look on wire, outside on the, the jacket of the wire here, there is uh, markings all along the jacket that say what the wire is rated for. Um, basically this wire right here, it's a marine grade wire. It's running all through our van, it's 12 gauge. We used it because we decided to go with 20 amp circuit breakers on all of our AC uh, devices. The main reason behind that is because our air conditioner needed a 20 amp breaker. So we decided to just go ahead and order a 100 foot spool of this stuff here and use it all throughout our van. And now it's a DECA Marine Master uh, marine grade wire. It's used in yachts and large boats and Basically, it is a stranded core wire. So when you uh, strip the wire back, you can see that there's a lot of little individual strands in the wire. Now what this does is this, it prevents the wire from overheating when it vibrates. So if you go inside a house and pull a wire out of your wall or go and look in your electrical panel, you'll see that typically in a house, they use solid core wire. And now, while solid core, core wire is good in residential commercial applications where the building's not moving, it's not what you want to use in your van. So the main difference, like I just said, is the stranded versus solid core wire. So when you use solid core wire in a van, when you're going down the road and the wire is doing this number inside your walls, the uh, solid core wire will generate heat and could eventually melt through the jacket and then catch the jacket on fire and therefore catch your van on fire. So that's one of the, the main things that you want to look at when you're buying wire for your van. Um, another thing to note, when you run electrical conduit in your van, basically like in our ceiling. So we did spray foam insulation. So before we put in the spray foam, we decided to go ahead and put in half inch conduit for all of our wire to run through so we could snake it through all the spray foam that's in the ceiling. And now when you run wire through conduit like that, that decreases the amount of heat that the wire can dissipate. And so basic rule of electricity, as you push current through a wire, there is resistance in the wire and the resistance then causes heat. And you'll notice on the outside of the cable jacket, this particular one right here is rated for 105 degrees C dry and 75 degrees C wet. The reason it has the wet and dry rating is because it is marine wire, which is what you want to use in your van. Um, there's really not any uh, wire made specifically for RVs. Uh, the standards for RVs are not as tough as the standards for the marine industry. So uh, me being from the marine industry, that's what my background is in. I trust ABYC standards and know that when I see the certain markings on the cable jacket that it passes those standards, that that's what I want to use. Even on the DC side of things with smaller wire and uh, stuff of that nature, we still used marine grade wire. We actually used is the same DECA Marine Master wire in our van, but just two conductors instead of three on the DC side of things to power our lights and other things in our van. So back to the conduit. When you run wires through the conduit, going through your van and through your insulation, that changes the heat rating of the wire. Or not so much changes the heat rating, but changes the amount of heat that the wire can dissipate. Because when it's in insulation, this jacket right here is not the only thing that's holding the heat in. The insulation that it's running through, and the conduit that it's running through, and if there's multiple wires next to each other. So in the case of this one, 
uh, if you have two load wires running next to each other, then it's both of those combined that you're worried about heat-wise. So make sure you size your wires according to whether they're running through conduit or running through insulation or just hanging out in the open air. If they're just running through a cabinet, then it's less to worry about. You also need to keep in mind if they're bundled together as well. All right, so I'm sure by this point you're wondering, but Carver, how do I know what size wire to run in my van? Simple. This app right here. The Blue Sea System Circuit Wizard. This is what we use to make sure that every circuit in our van was run with the correct size wire. And this is not just through our walls. These are all of our battery cables, basically everything in the van. So, I'm gonna walk you through this app here that we used. This is not a paid advertisement by Blue Sea. This is just a tool that I used building the van that I found really helpful. And I think probably everyone building a van should use this app or something similar to properly size their wires. So. Let's see here. Basically, when you open the app, you've got four different things that you can choose from. You can calculate wire size, calculate your fuse or breaker, which we'll get to in the next weeks, or two weeks from now in the, the fuse and circuit breaker video. So we'll be back to this app in that too. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming out in two weeks. But you've also got circuit protection products and your history. So we're gonna stick to the calculate wire size section here. Basically, it's looking for information that will help you size your wire properly. So you start off with the voltage here, and you click either 12 or 24. Uh, in our van, we have both, actually, so we'll just use 12 for the sake of the example. We're going to say this is for our refrigerator, so we're going to put the number of amps that our refrigerator pulls, which is roughly 4.5, so I'm going to round up to 5, and then we're going to hit next. Now the length of the conductor is the total length from the battery to the device. So basically however long this wire is running, you need to put it in here. So in the case of our uh, isotherm refrigerator that's in our van, it's roughly 7 feet. So I'm going to round up to 8 just to give us a little bit of cushion. Go to the next one. The allowable voltage drop in this app. So in the marine world, you typically want your like nav nav and uh, like critical mission critical uh, components like your engine your navigation your light your nav lights stuff like that to have a three percent voltage drop and your auxiliary stuff like your cabin lights and uh, other things in the in the boat would be a ten percent voltage drop for the sake of just being a little bit overkill I use the three percent voltage drop on everything in our van so we're gonna use three percent now, now we're getting to the wire insulation rating. And this is where uh, you can look on the wire that you bought, or if you want to buy a wire with a specific rating, the highest that the app will go is 105 degrees C, which fortunately for us is what the wiring here is that we chose to use. So we're gonna select 105 degrees C. Then since this is designed around boats, it's gonna ask you, do you uh, install this in the engine room, which no, <laughs> you don't do that in a van, so click no. Now, the select bundle size. That's looking for how many wires are bundled together. So if you've got a bundle of 10 wires going from the battery to the kitchen and the refrigerator is running with all 10 of those, you'd put 7 to 24 in there. Uh, in our case, we ran the refrigerator wiring pretty much by itself because there's really not much other electrical in our kitchen. Uh, at least in the cabinets down low. So we're gonna say there's only one bundle in the wire. And then it'll ask you how long are you gonna run the load through the system. Um, and for the case of our refrigerator, it's gonna run 24 seven. So I'm gonna put the total number of minutes that is in a day. So that's 1440 minutes for a single day. And we hit next. And it wants to know whether it is terminated on a fuse or not. This means if, uh, if it's terminated on a fuse, that's going to increase your resistance and therefore change the amount that it's going to tell you that you need for wire size. In our case, none of our wires are terminated on a fuse block except for uh, one leaving the battery. We went through a Blue C uh, fuse block instead of and actual just terminating it on the fuse so that lets us say that no we are not terminated on the fuse all right and then it's got this whole entire uh, list of basically all the information we just put in and you click calculate 
and it's going to tell you, okay, in order to run your refrigerator, you need to run AWG 18 gauge wire to run our isotherm refrigerator in the van. And we actually went one wire size above. We went up to 16 when we ran it, and that's just because everything else in the van we ran was 16 gauge wire just to have a little bit of a cushion because some of our like the ceiling lights they all went through conduit so we added a little cushion on those and it was easier to order a hundred foot spool of the wire in order to go all throughout the van so we ended up just using 16 on that because that was basically the the biggest load that we needed to to run on our smaller dc circuits that we were going to like run throughout the van uh, as far as battery wires and stuff like that we actually used really large battery cables that we ordered specifically for that. All right guys, we hope you found this video helpful. If you're curious about the other two most popular electrical mistakes that we see, make sure you check out our video, the three most common electrical mistakes that people make when they do their vans. And you can see what the other two mistakes are and look forward for the other two videos that we're gonna be coming out with in the next uh, two to four weeks.